Hello everyone. So this is part two of the lecture on population genetics for evolution by 111 at Keene State College in the spring of 2013. All right guys, so I ended the last YouTube video with this problem. Cystic fibrosis is uh, a genetic disor disorder in homozygous recessive that causes death during the teenage years. If nine in 10,000 newborn babies have the disease, what are the expected frequencies of the dominant A1 and recessive A2 alleles according to the Hardy-Weinberg model? Okay, so we know that um, there are a couple things that we know here. We know that individuals that have two A2, A2 alleles have cystic fibrosis. Okay, and we know that in order to have the um, disease, you have to have two of these alleles. And we know that nine in 10,000 newborn babies are A2, A2. Okay, so what we know is that this number, A2A2, is equal to Q squared, or the frequency of homozygous recessives. So we know that Q squared, if we divide 9 by 10,000, is 0 0.0009, right? In order to get Q, we take the square root of 0 0.0009, which is 0 0.03. Because of the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium equation, again, this is equal to the frequency of a, the A2 allele in the population. Because the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium equation, we know that P plus Q is equal to 1, P plus 0 0.03 is equal to 1. Therefore, P is equal to 1 minus 0 0.03, or P is equal to 0 0.97. This is the frequency of the A1 allele. So the correct answer to this question <coughs> is where is it? Right here. The frequency of the A1 allele is 0 0.9700. <coughs> Excuse me. And the frequency of the A2 allele is 0 0.03. Okay. So knowing the frequency, <coughs> knowing the frequency in the population of individuals that have the disease, we can determine what the allele frequencies would be expected in the next generation if no evolution is occurring in the population. Okay. It's this pretty simple Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium equation. There are some important assumptions associated with um, Hardy-Weinberg. We're assuming that no evolution is happening in the population, that is, there's no genetic drift, that is, there's no random change due to some sort of strange sampling effect. In other words, A1 didn't get lucky and um, or the A1 allele didn't get lucky in this case and get um, represented in the next population more than it than it um, than existed than existed in the parental population. We know that no natural selection occurred in the population. This is an important assumption of Hardy-Weinberg. In other words, there's nothing influencing the presence or absence of one allele over the other. There was, there's no gene flow in the population. In other words, there's no movement into or out of the population of particular alleles. There's no new alleles that are going to be present in the population due to mutation. And that there's random mating in the population. In other words, um, individuals can't choose to mate with one particular um, genotype expressed as a phenotype versus another. Okay, 
So, um, so what Hardy Weinberg essentially states is, um, is it's a way to predict allele frequencies if absolutely nothing is impacted the popula impacting the population, which we know realistically really doesn't happen in most populations. So why in the heck? Are we going to bother with a, does, does anyone want to bother with this Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium equation? Well, what, it, what the uh, equilibrium equation means, or what the principle uh, explains, is it allows us to quantify our expectations of what would happen in a population if evolution was not occurring. What this does is it allows us to compare those expectations to what we see in real populations. The Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, as we discussed when we had our um, our paper discussion last week is the null hypothesis. Okay, and we expect most populations will um, deviate from the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. From Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Let's look at. Let's try to work through a couple of more problems here. Let's say here in uh, humans, albinism is caused by uh, loss of function mutations in genes that involve the synthesis of melanin, the dark pigment in skin. Only people who are homozygous recessive for a loss of function allele will have the relevant phenotype. In Americans of Northern European ancestry, albino individuals are present at a frequency of about 1 in, one in 10,000. Knowing this genotype frequency and assuming that genotypes are in Heidi Weinberg equilibrium, we can then calculate the frequency of the loss of function alleles. Assume that Q squared is equal to the frequency of homozygous recessive individuals. You should, based upon what we've learned, be able to tell me what the frequency of the big A allele is, what the frequency of the little little a allele is, rather, what the frequency of the little a allele is, what the frequency of the big a allele is, what should be the frequencies of carriers um, in the population, and what should be the frequency of homozygous dominant individuals in the population. Okay, so let's work through this uh, a little bit. I'm going to erase a bunch of material here because we don't really need to know it right this moment. <clears throat> okay. Here's what we know. Let me make this smaller. Hopefully, it'll make okay. So I have room to write here. So <clears throat> we know that one out of ten thousand individuals in the population we're studying is um, is albino. Just fix something really quickly. Sorry. Okay, so we know that one in 10,000 individuals in the population is albino. Okay, or have the homozygous recessive genotype. <coughs> so this is equal to Q squared, and if you divide one by 10,000, you get 0 0.0001. Okay. In order to determine the frequency of the little a allele, or q, we need to take the square root of 0 0.0001, which is equal to 0 0.01. Okay, so we have the answer to the first part of this question here. It's 0 0.01. To determine the frequency of the big A allele, we would um, take, we know that P plus Q is equal to 1, okay, or P plus 0 0.01 is equal to 1, or, <coughs> excuse me, uh, P is equal to 1 minus 0 0.01, or P is equal to 0 0.99. So now we have the answer to this, the second question, 0 0.99. Okay. Now, <clears throat> put these back in. 
Now we have to be now we should be able to determine the frequency of carriers in the population. So we know that the frequency of carriers in the population is equal to 2pq according to the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium equation, which is 2 times 0 0.01 times 0 0.99, and this should equal, excuse me, 0 0.0198. Okay, so this is the frequency of carriers in the population. And we should be able to determine the frequency of homozygous dominant individuals in the population. We want to know what the frequency of homozygous dominant individuals in. Okay. And we know that that is going to be equal to p squared. And we know that p is equal to 0 0.99. So if you square that, that will equal to equal 0 0.9801. Okay, so you can determine all of these different factors um, using the Hardy-Weinberg uh, equilibrium equation, knowing essentially only one thing about a population. Okay. Now, let's extend this problem a little bit. <clears throat> Let's say we look at um, the actual numbers of Americans of Northern, Northern European ancestry and determine that the frequency of the big A, big A, big A, little A, and little A, little, uh, little A individuals is as follows. Okay, so this is what we know is the frequency um, of the different genotypes in this population. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. Is this population in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium? Here is how you approach this question. Okay, you're going to get a bunch of these questions um, on the exam. Here's how you approach it. Okay, you start with either the homozygous recessive or homozygous dominant genotype. As a rule, you can you can do either, but as a rule, I always start with the homozygous recessive genotype. Okay. We know that little a, little a, is equal to 0 0.0001, okay? That is equal to q squared. We know that if this population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, that q is equal to 0 0.01. You should be able to determine that by now. And we know that p is equal to 0 0.99 if q is equal to 0 0.01. We know that 2pq, or the frequency of heterozygous individuals in the population, if it is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, should be 0 0.0198. And we know that the frequency of homozygous dominant individuals, or individuals that are big A, big A, should be 0 0.9801. What you would then determine is you would look at these frequencies that are expected if the population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium and compare them to the actual frequencies. So you can see that the actual frequencies of Northern European Americans in the population that are heterozygous is 0 0.6000 which is deviates from what we calculated the, the, um, the frequency of heterozygote should be if it were in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. The same is true of the um, homozygous dominant genotype. Okay? It's much less frequent in the population than we would expect if the population were in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. So we would say no. The population is not in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium because the frequency of heterozygotes is different from what we would expect if the population, the frequency of real heterozygotes in the, in the real population is different from what we would expect um, if it were in a Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. So something is impacting this population such that um, it deviates from what would be expected. So evolution has occurred in this population.
Let's work through another problem. <clears throat> okay, researchers studying a small milky population know that some plants produce a toxin and other plants do not. They identify the gene responsible for toxin production. One allele T codes for an enzyme that makes a toxin, and the other allele, little t, codes for a non-functional enzyme that cannot produce a toxin. Heterozygotes produce an intermediate amount of toxin. The genotypes of all the individuals in the population are determined. Now listen, this is somewhat irrelevant. <clears throat> okay, It's this information that is really what you need to solve these Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium equations. Okay, so refer to the figure above, that's this one. Is this population in Hardy-Weinberg? And you should determine whether it is or not and explain why you chose your answer. Okay, so let's take a look at this. You approach it exactly the same way as we did before. <clears throat> Let's choose the homozygous recessive genotype, okay, which we know is Q squared. Oops, excuse me. Sorry. I did something I did not intend to do. Hold on for a second. <clears throat> Pardon me, I'm using a new drawing tool. Let's try this again. So, we know that um, the frequency of the homozygous recessive genotype is equal to 0 0.16. We can then determine that Q is equal to the um, square root of that number. Okay, so. The square root of 0 0.16, excuse me, yes, 0 0.16 is equal to 0 0.4. Okay, so <clears throat> we can then derive uh, P. So uh, P plus 0 0.4 equals 1 according to the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium equation. So P is equal to 0 0.6. Okay, If this is P and Q in a population that we expect to be in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, uh, um, we know that 2PQ is equal to 2 times 0 0.4 times 0 0.6, which is equal to 2 times 0.4 times 0.6, which is equal to 0 0.48. So that should be the fre frequency of heterozygotes. And if this population were um, in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, the frequency of, of um, uh, uh, homozygous dominant individuals should be equal to p squared, which is equal to 0 0.36. Okay, so <clears throat> what we have here is if we compare the expected frequency of heterozygous individuals to the actual frequency of heterozygous individuals, we can see that it deviates, and the same is true for homozygous dominant individuals. And so you would have to conclude that no, the population is not in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. And the reason is, is that if you approach the problem in this way, the frequency of the heterozygotes is higher, would be, um, is lower than what would be expected if the population were in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. And the frequency of homozygous dominant individuals is higher than would be expected if the population were in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Okay, But the best way to really explain your answer is to say this, but also to accompany your answer with these calculations. Okay, So hopefully you guys are getting this at this point. <clears throat> so let's...
go to one last problem. Um, and let's say that um, we're studying the same milkweed group. And you can pause the, the presentation at this point if you want to try to work through this on your own. <clears throat> but we need to know, again, the same thing. Here the frequency of genotypes is this, of observed genotypes in the, popula in the population is this population in, in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Again, start it exactly the same way. We can e actually even start it in a different way if you want to. Remember how I said you can either start with the homozygous recessive individuals or homozygous redominant dominant individuals and work through the problem from there? Previously, we've only been working through it from um, uh, starting with the, heter the frequency of the heterozygous recessive individual, excuse me, the homozygous recessive individuals. Let's start with the homozygous dominant individuals this time. Okay, so we know that P squared equals big T, big T, which in this case is 0 0.79. We then know that the square root of 0 0.79 is 0 0.89 which means that Q is equal to 0, excuse me, 0 0.11. I'm writing a little too quickly for this uh, tab. Okay. Q squared, if this population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium or the frequency of homozygous recessive individuals should be 0 0.01. And the frequency of heterozygous individuals, if this population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, should be 2PQ or 0 0.20. Okay. If you look, is this population in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium? Absolutely. The answer is yes. And that is because the frequencies of the homozygous recessive and the heterozygous genotypes in this population, if it were in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, is equal to the observed frequencies in the population. Okay. That's as complex as these problems are going to get. Okay. When we get into class on Thursday, I'll work through <coughs> excuse me. I'll work through with you a couple of these examples and make maybe just one or two, make sure that we're all on the same page here. Okay, so practice these, and you'll see a couple of these questions in um, the activity in uh, in your textbook. Okay, as well, you'll see different kinds of questions that you can try to challenge yourself with here. All right, so I'm going to end this particular uh, YouTube video right here, and in the next YouTube video, we're going to talk about things that can cause the population to cause a population to be out of Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Okay, so see you guys in just a sec.